Hi, Mark Gordon on April 16th with a gold, silver, and stock forecast. This is the GLD, the gold ETF, down about a quarter of a percent today and doing a whole lot of nothing for the last week or so. Um, came up here, uh, uh, tagged this upper trend line on some good volume and then has been uh, drifting back uh, and uh, in light, light volume here and uh, closed just under this red line, the 21-day moving average today. Closed right on this gray line, the 10-day moving average. Uh, so just kind of drifting sideways here uh, for the last week or so. Uh, we have set up this channel here. You can see I drew some channel lines, these blue dotted lines, and kind of going back and forth along this channel line. Will we come back down here and tag that? Could happen. Uh, um, or we could stabilize down in here and make another run for the top here. We'll have to see. We do. We are below this 50-day moving average, this blue solid line, not such a good thing. We're below, in fact, all the key moving averages now. Uh, this uh, black dotted line is the 200-day, and the green dotted line is the 100-day, so below them all. Um, so not such a great thing in that department. Um, momentum is slightly in our favor. When we look down here at the MACD, a lot of traders follow the MACD. We have a cross of the black line above the blue line. The black line is the shorter moving average crossing the slower moving blue line. So good thing there. So we got some momentum on our side. Looks like it's picking up a little steam to the upside. Stochastics are in our favor also. Red line pointing up, uh, uh, the black line. Uh, uh, the uh, uh, faster moving average uh, moving kind of sideways but not in overbought territory yet so we have more room to the upside if it wants to go so for uh, for the GLD to really uh, uh, become impressive it needs to get up above this upper channel line and start clearing these moving averages we're just we're not too far up ahead a couple points uh, on a move and we could be up above these so um, let's see what happens here if we start to get some volume to the upside and crashing through these to the upside uh, I'm going to turn a lot more bullish on the GLD. Right now, I am neutral. And here is the SLV, uh, up about uh, three uh, one-hundredths of a percent, hardly anything, just a flat day here. Uh, kind of building a little bit of a bottom here. Possibly we have a new base forming. be great to see a cup come out of this. Uh, those are great base structures here. Uh, you know, down along the bottoms, just kind of waffling and shaking out all the weak holders getting rid of them. You know, they say stocks either wear you out or scare you out. This one's kind of wearing us out and wearing us out by doing a whole lot of nothing. This too, under all the key moving averages, uh, the green dotted line 100, uh, the red, of course, the 21 and the blue, the 50 and way up here is the 200 day. So uh, silver, uh, not as impressive as the gold as far as uh, uh, being below all these key moving averages, especially way below the 200, but uh, possibly forming a new base. Now what we'd love to see on the right side of this cup would be uh, see some volume pick up as we move to the upside. That would be great. And of course, like the GLD, getting above these key moving averages would be a bullish, bullish sign. So right now, Biden, it's time forming possibly a cup. So I'm neutral on silver also. And looking at the S&P 500, this is the SPY, uh, down about 7 one hundredths of a percent, also doing nothing. Very tight to uh, close here. Two closes, though, below the 50-day moving average. And not such a good thing. Volume was uh, a little bit lighter than, uh, than the previous session, um, so, so not so bad. But uh, two closes below, uh, some traders are starting to think about getting out. Or I should say more traders are starting to think about getting out. Uh, correcting off the top, uh, about 4.5% so far. Um, got, had about a 15 and a quarter percent gain since the follow-through day on December 20th. So nice move for the S&P 500. Um, but uh, right now, going through a bit of a correction here, but closing near the 50, but two-day close below it. I'm sure a lot of traders have picked up on that. Now, moving on to the, the NASDAQ, this is the home of the more uh, aggressive growth stocks. And uh, this index, our first close below the 50-day moving average, but slicing it on a pickup in volume. Uh, still slightly below average volume, though, but on a pickup in volume, distribution coming in as it gets no support at the 50-day moving average. So not such a great thing there. If you kind of use your eyeball and draw a rounding top, you'll see what I'm talking about. We have this sort of rounder here. Possibly we have more work to do on the downside. Uh, looking at our MACD uh, pointing down both averages and uh, our um, a relative strength line pointing down. Stochastics way down here in the oversold territory, which is actually a good thing. And uh, so, uh, you know, let's see what happens with the NASDAQ here. So far, testing unsuccessfully the 50-day moving average. And when we look at our mega cap stocks, this is the Dow Jones Industrial Average, up about a half a percent today. 
but many closes I think we got what five five six closes underneath the 50-day moving average so this one sliced through it earlier uh, last week on some pretty impressive volume here so the big boys uh, uh, taking some profits here and uh, um, still not able to rally it above the 50-day moving average so uh, all the major indexes still in a correction. Uh, we never know how low these will go. So it's best to uh, suspend all new purchases and stocks and let this thing uh, settle out. And monitor your stocks, of course, individually to see uh, if they're getting weak. If they are, I would take some profits. That's just me. Anyways, thanks for listening, and good luck trading.